Good afternoon and welcome to NYFP. In midday trade on this Fed day, we are seeing the major U.S. stock averages hold on to session gains, but we are seeing the Dow come off triple digit gains. Joining me now is Alan Valdez of DME Securities. Alan, good afternoon. Great to have you back. Remy, thanks for having me. Well, we're here on a very eventful day at 2 p.m. Eastern time. We get the Fed rate announcement and all eyes will be on Bernanke's statement. But we also got a better than expected second quarter GDP and the ADP employment coming at its highest level of this year. So what do you make of the action we're seeing right now? You know, great day. You're 100 percent right, Remy. ADP, which is somewhat in, in indecisive sometimes a number, but it was 200,000, a great number to see. And of course, Friday's that big number, but for today, that's a great number. And of course, GDP, 1.7. We were looking for 1.1. Now, 1.7, still below that magical 2% growth, so it's not going to change unemployment much, but yet it shows we're going in the right direction. And so later on with the Fed, we don't think he's going to say anything. We think he's going to be pretty quiet about it. He's not going to derail this nice little rally we have going. But we can see tapering now probably as early as this fall, maybe back to $65 billion because you know why? Now the economy is strong enough to move forward. If he had done this six months ago, the market would be falling apart. But the fact is we've been getting stronger, the economy that is, gradually, day by day, it seems. And I don't think the market's going to take this as a big shock if, in fact, September we pull back $20 billion a day, a month. Well, Alan, uh, today we had the Dow uh, hitting record highs, and we'll still have to see where we close uh, after the Fed rate decision. And as you mentioned, we're still waiting for that jobs report, which comes out on Friday. Now, you've given us your expectations for when you expect the uh, Fed to taper and pull back from its bond buying program. But going forward, what do you expect to see for the global market? Well, you know, the global markets outside of Europe, even though Europe's getting a little stronger, it's still lagging. But if you look at China, slower but still growing. If you look at uh, uh, South America, still growing. So basically the whole world is starting to grow. Europe's still a problem, still high unemployment. That's the big problem over there. So they have a ways to go, it seems. But I think generally the world economy is doing better. I mean, you look at our imports, exports today, they're both a little stronger than we anticipated. So I think in general, uh, we'll have a good year coming up. I think the worst is behind us, and especially here in America, because if you look at the housing market, that has been robust the last four months, so that's getting much stronger. Jobs, no matter what the number is going to be on Friday, is going in the right direction, I believe. And uh, heading into tomorrow's session, we get the ECB rate decision and global PMI manufacturing figures. So we'll continue to monitor those uh, data points. But given that we're halfway through uh, earnings season and we've seen some misses as well as some unexpected surprises, what do you make of what we're seeing so far? I think generally actually a little weak. Uh, bottom line, which is so easy to beat because we can lower the bar anywhere we want, it's been okay. It's been about 68% better than expected. But that top line is basically 50% better. So that's pretty historically weak. We like to see it up into the 60s, the low 70s. So the companies aren't making that revenue yet. That's the problem. It's starting to turn around, but it's not there yet. So we need the revenue. Without the revenue, eventually it will all implode because you need that revenue to spur hiring and you need that revenue to get the bottom line actually above where we like to put it. So I think we want to see that revenue. That said, we're coming in August starts tomorrow, so that's going to be a slow month. Next month's slow. Nothing's going to happen probably. But come September, we gear up for the holidays, so you should see some spending going on. So I'm confident that if you invest today in this stock market, come December 31st, the market will be higher today and you'll be very happy. And, Alan, if you had invested at the beginning of this year, you'd be happy right now. Um, but I do want to get your take on uh, what we're going to see heading into uh, the rest of this month. You said, given that we've had uh, the U.S. GDP as well as the jobs report and the next Fed meeting is in September. So do you expect to continue to see uh, quiet trading once uh, the jobs report comes out? Oh, no question about it. I think the rest of the summer will be very quiet. There's no real news, like you mentioned, coming out of the feds. They're gone for the summer. Washington essentially closed, which is a good thing. I mean, that's closed. So earnings will be over. Remember, they really, the, uh, the uh, ETFs bounce off earnings. So without earnings, there's nothing to guide them. So I think you'll see a market that will drift sideways to up. I think it will be quiet, but on the upside because there's a lot of money. Remember, two weeks ago, hundred billion went into cash accounts in America. So that money's just sitting there and they see that the market, like you mentioned, we're having a good year the first seven months of the year. The, the S&Ps are up 18 percent. So that money's going to get involved and I think you could see the market continue to drift up on no news but light volume. 
And Ellen, before I let you go, there were revisions to uh, today's GDP reading, and every five years the government does uh, revise these figures, but it does appear as though the latest revisions added an additional $559 billion, so there might be some skeptics out there who might be uh, cautious when they're looking at the preliminary GDP figures for second quarter GDP, but what's your take on that? Well, you're right. I mean, the way they change is sometimes you, you're very skeptical. I understand that. But I think at the end of the day, if you look at the jobs number, that is stronger. If you look at housing, that is stronger. So that would lead to a stronger GDP. So I think overall, even though you could be skeptical of the numbers, they're still going in the right direction. You know, it's like in poker. You play the, ha the, the hand you, you get, you know, the card you get, rather. So I think that's what we have to do. Is it 1.7? Is it 1.2? We'll never know for sure. But the fact is, it's going in the right direction. Well, Alan, great analogy. So thank you so much for joining me today, and thanks for your insight. Great to have you back on the floor. Thank you so much. Thank